Hello, Lori Lane Zucker, founder and CEO of Impact Entrepreneur, and we're here at the SOCAP conference in San Francisco, California, and I'm very happy to be sitting next to the famous, or should I say infamous, Ian Fisk. Hi, Ian. Hello, Ian Fisk, Mentor Capital Network. Um, and to a certain extent, if I do my job well, people don't necessarily know I did it, but more on that later. But the funders have to know, so I'm happy to be famous within a certain community. Well, I've known uh, Ian for a number of years now, and I know Ian to be absolutely uh, one, of, one of the most important uh, figures in impact business incubation and general uh, support for uh, this type of double and triple bottom line business. But let me not talk about the work you do. I'd like you to talk about the work you do. Tell me about Mentor Capital Network. So the Mentor Capital Network is a pool of about a thousand folks around the globe who have built, managed, or invested in for-profit social enterprises. We connect them as mentors and advisors to entrepreneurs who are starting or growing the same. In the 15 years that we've been running the program, we have learned a couple of things and adjusted our program. One is you want to make sure that the mentors and the entrepreneurs have the opportunity to choose each other. And we have a variety of pieces of our program that I will describe later that make sure that the mentors are working with entrepreneurs that make them feel appreciated and that the entrepreneurs are working with mentors that are giving them information in a way that the entrepreneur is receiving it. Mentors, it's okay if you don't do what the mentor says, but you have to listen and engage with them. Otherwise, why would they bother? We also do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer we put people together who are addressing the same challenges but not competing for the same customers. So we might have a phone call, the gentleman who just walked by who said, hello, Jonathan Levine with Folia Water, one of our recent alum, um, you, one of our alum, not so recent. Uh, he was on a call out of Bangladesh uh, with folks in Myanmar and India and Costa Rica and California and Minnesota on if you're a social enterprise and you have champions but they're not your employees, what's your relationship to them? How do you make them uh, feel appreciated without breaking any laws about, mis you know? And then we had another call about how do you work in a country where you, you're told you must work with the government and that you shouldn't work with the government. In other words, the government is corrupt. And at the end of these calls, the entrepreneurs are given the chance to say whether the call should be public or private. The champions call will be on our website in a couple of weeks. The how do you work with a corrupt government call will never be on our website. Because if you and I get on a stage or on a recording and say, here are the secrets of our industry, we're unclear of the meaning of the word secrets. Construction? Which way do you want me looking? Which way do you want me looking? Here, me, me. Okay, okay. Um, how do entrepreneurs find you? When we started um, back in 04 or 05, I emailed every net impact chapter in the world. Um, I had back end access to the database because I was the first professional chapter, chapter leader outside of their HQ. And I knew how it worked because it was written on software that I understood. And so I just emailed every chapter leader and told them about our opportunities. Now, I mean, we have an open call. We're on the website. You can find us at mentorcapitalnet.org. Yes, I have an email address that ends in net.org. Sorry about that. But now the best people for us to find entrepreneurs for us are the folks who've been through our program, either as mentors or as entrepreneurs, because they know who benefits from what we do. We're different from a lot of other incubators and accelerators in that I say that we are efficient, engaging, and we, we accomplish great goals. We are efficient in that we will take less time from an entrepreneur than other programs. Other programs, great programs like um, Fledge or like the Miller Center or Village Capital or Agora, or, they will do more for you, but they will take more of your time, which if you're in the right place, that could be a great thing. With us, all you're doing is sending in a business plan, if accepted, the, the only action we think that you take that you wouldn't take otherwise is sending thank you notes to the people who reviewed your business plan that you aren't going to engage with. 
Uh, so the way that our program works is uh, folks apply. Most of the folks who are who come to us with quality applications, because we've been on the web for 15 years, so we get the usual flotsam and jetsam, they came through somebody who'd worked with us before. But we're 15 years in. We've had more than 2,500 people as mentors or as entrepreneurs. Many of them as both. Um, we take their business plan. I send it to a team of 10 to 15 different people who review it from different points of view. Um, marketing, finance, operations. Uh, same community, different line of work. Same line of work, different community. We're very big on finding people who are addressing the same challenges, but not competing for the same customers. Everybody reviews it. They send the review in. When I ask people to be reviewers, I do not ask, do you want to be a mentor? I've been doing this work for 25 years. I can tell you, not because I am psychic, but because I've been doing this work for 25 years. But your answer to the question, do you want to be a mentor, is, I'd love to, but I'm busy. What do you mean? So instead I say, can you review two business plans in the month of March? Here's a list of the companies we're going to be looking at, to which you're either going to say yes, no, or ask me on the 1st of March. And then say you review. Um, I'm sure I will be asking you to review. You write up. It uh, takes you two to three hours per plan. You read it. You write up some comments. The scorecard is broken into a couple of different pieces. Uh, the first part, how did they do their finance? Did their financials make sense? The first part looks like every other business scorecard you've ever read. The second part is predictives. How well do you think the company is going to be doing? We've been asking the same questions for more than a decade. I can tell you, for example, that lawyers are better at predicting companies that will fail than other backgrounds. Um, and people who work with physical products, that is to say designers and people at museums, are better at judging the success of a product-based company than folks who just have an abstract numbers-based marketing background. This is solid data from 10 years of an, more than 8,000 surveys, right? Um, and then the people, so the predictives, and then we, we do a thing where we try and solve for what we call the bro problem. People like, people like them. So we ask people, you know, how did you feel? Did you like the entrepreneur? Now, we don't have prizes. We don't have winners. So it doesn't actually matter if you really, you feel better about people that you feel like to. That's fine. It means you're more likely to be a mentor to them. That's good. But it helps me wait for that in seeing, are you really good at predicting who's going to do better or worse? And then the most important question is the last one, which is, do you want to be a mentor? To which they have four options. Love to be a mentor. Happy to do a call. Willing to answer questions by email. Or please leave me anonymous. Less than 6% check the anonymous box because I'm good at my job and modest, but also I have to offer that, otherwise I would lose a lot of the very busy people. Now the entrepreneur looks at the feedback. First, they send everybody a thank you note. The reason I'm overly concerned about this is because what they want to do is they want to write detailed letters to everybody about all the feedback. They don't have time for that, they're running a company. So I make them send a th simple thank you note so it's done. And then they choose who they want to engage with as mentors and for follow-up calls based on the feedback and their decision that this is quality feedback, this is useful information to me delivered in a way that I will receive it. Now, sometimes they want to start relationships with 10 or 12 new people because that happens. And then I discourage them from that because they shouldn't have the time to start 10 or 12 mentoring relationships at once. So we work with them to pick the one or two that are the best for that moment in time. Because one of the tricks with mentoring is you'll find people who could be really helpful to you a year from now or six months from now. I am their link to six or 12 months when they're expanding into India and that person was going to be a really good mentor for that. I can reach back out to our community and do that. Uh, so we are getting them to engage with mentors in a dual opt-in way. The short version is I run a dating site. We, we don't encourage romantic 
whatever happens, happens. It's more than 10,000 connections. So, But uh, we're getting two people to want to spend time with each other who are both very busy and neither of whom is getting paid to do that. I used to study OkCupid okay and Match about the same because they're very detailed in their psychological questions. Although um, less detailed than they would have you believe, but that's a whole separate issue. And so we are obsessive about who are the people um, who are going to mentor, like technical skills is the easy part. I can find someone who has the skill set that you need. I've been doing this for 15 years. I have this giant roster list. Like that's not that hard. But are they going to want to engage with you and are you going to want to engage with them? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's really impressive how much attention and time and energy you've given to this, this uh, realm of mentorship. And uh, I'm really, I and so many others are really appreciated, appreciative for that work that you've done and for what uh, the uh, mentor capital networks done for this whole space that SOCAP is uh, uh, can, bringing together here at the conference. Give me one more time your uh, domain address for the audience. MentorCapitalNet.org, M-E-N-T-O-R-C-A-P-T-I-A-L-N-E-T.org. And I should say that over 15 years we've worked with more than a thousand companies. About half of them are still in business. Uh, and together they have raised or earned north of a billion dollars. So these are companies like Tala, like Uncommon Cacao, like Runa, like Back to the Roots. Uh, two of our most successful companies entered our program twice. Tala and Back to the Roots, both of which have been big successes in this space, entered in their first and second years. They clearly thought we were valuable. Um, and we partner with a lot of other localized incubators. So if you're running a program in Managua or Bethesda or Lahore in Pakistan, I'm going to assume you have better local people, but we will we will partner with them so that we will bring in the people not from the area, but who are addressing the same challenges and not competing. Ian, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for the work you're doing.